Audio Jungle. Watch WWE Presents. Year in and year out, WWE's roster changes up a bit. As recently as May this year, we saw 8 talent removed from the roster. Keep in mind, it is a job for these people, and eventually they will get fired or released somehow. With the roster changing as much as it does, we tend to forget many wrestlers of the past, some even as recent as 2010. So here's a little test to all of you. Being honest, how many of these guys do you actually remember? I'm D Wicket from Watch WWE, and these are the 10 WWE superstars from the 2010s you've forgotten. Quick disclaimer, I'm only counting main roster stuff here, so no time during NXT, FCW, and that one month of ECW is being taken into consideration. Sorry. Number 10, David Hartsmith. I really don't like putting him here, as he was a very talented and even a tag team champion with Tyson Kidd, but sadly he's very easy to forget. His time was very short lived and once the Hart Dynasty split up, Smith was stuck on superstars until his release. It's easy to remember him as the guy Tyson Kidd was teaming with 5 years before he teamed with Cesaro. Sadly. Number 9, Mason Ryan. Another guy that I have to admit is sort of memorable because of a pairing with others, you may remember Mason Ryan as the big tank from CM Punk's new Nexus. Right around the time CM Punk was preparing the pipe bomb and turning himself into a main eventer, Ryan got injured and was out for a few months. He returned and turned face, feuded with Ziggler for a bit, joined Team Morton at Survivor Series that year, and was on TV sporadically throughout 2012 until being sent down to NXT. Number 8, Kurt Hawkins. The first entrant to actually have been on WWE television before 2010, Kurt Hawkins was with Edge in the La Familia stable but didn't do much else. He returned to SmackDown after some time back in FCW and would spend the next three years teaming with two other people who will both be on this list, so obviously they have to be John Cena and Randy Orton or something. After this, he was sent back down to NXT, but lo and behold, on the 21st of July 2016, he's re-signed with the WWE. Hopefully, he does something memorable this time. Number 7, Michael Tarver. The last of the bunch that you might actually know through association, Michael Tarver was a part of 2010's best storyline, at least when it started, The Nexus. He lasted in it for a few months, even getting to be a part of that SummerSlam 2010 main event where the wrong seven men won, sorry John, but in October he got injured and was kayfabe kicked out of the Nexus. Talk about bad luck, Tarver would occasionally be seen randomly in the background of SmackDown and Raw, however he remains the only rookie from NXT Season 1 to not return to the ring. Number 6, Eric Escobar. Guys, I'm sorry, I've resorted to cheating for this position on the list, I, I know, I know, I'm very sorry. Eric Escobar's run lasted from, unless of course you're Roman Reigns. He qualified for the bragging rights team for SmackDown, but was removed for some reason. He only ever got himself one title match in his four months, losing to John Morrison for the Intercontinental Championship, and then eventually turned on Vicky. The easiest way to get cheered, unless you're beating up Roman Reigns. Ounce. Number 5, Tyler Rex. If you remember anything, it's that weird hair. Tyler Rex is another ECW guy who joined the main roster and did pretty much nothing but team fights. Seriously, his first storyline was the Bragging Rights 2010 match, and his next one was the Survivor Series Del Rio vs Mysterio match. Then he feuded with Chris Masters for a little bit and was destroyed by the new Nexus when he entered the Royal Rumble at 2016 in only 34 seconds. What did he do after this? Remember those two guys I said teamed with Kurt Hawkins? Yep, so clearly I don't need to say much else here. Number 4, Kalen Croft. Number 3, Trent Beretta. Weird, huh? Well, I basically have to talk about them together, so here you go. Croft and Beretta were the dude busters in ECW when they came to SmackDown and feuded with the Hart Dynasty, hello again David, but could never beat them. They turned face and got their first win on SmackDown over the Gate Crashers, the team of Kurt Hawkins and... uh, never mind, we'll get there soon. Weird that all these forgettable guys are all connecting in storylines, huh? Well, Croft was released after this, and now we're just on Beretta. And to be honest, that's about it, as Beretta was the definition of a jobber, mainly appearing on Superstars, and when he was on SmackDown, he would almost always lose. He eventually got himself into a long-term feud with Tyson Kidd, which he lost. I'm pretty sure even Zack Ryder's internet show included a Where's Beretta segment. That's just pathetic. Two forgettable stars. Makes sense that they were teaming together. Number 2, Camacho. Ha, Camacho. The guy who gave me the idea to do this list in the first place, because when you think back of wrestlers in the last 5 years and 8 months, who in the hell is thinking of the bike riding tag team partner of the guy who was Sin Cara Negro after being unmasked? And really, what is there to say about him? He was the enforcer to Hunico, who, by the way, if he wasn't Sin Cara right now, I'd put him on this list too. Him and Hunico won a match against the Usos, and then they hopped back and forth between NXT a few times. The only other notable thing he ever even did was being attacked by The Undertaker on Raw 1000. And I know I said I wouldn't, but just for the fun of it, his final NXT feud was a losing effort against Adam Rose of all people. 
not Leo Kruger, Adam Rose. Honorable mentions. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing honorable mentions now. Go out to the aforementioned Hunako and also Yoshitatsu. I just like his theme song too much to let him be on here. And number one, Vance Archer. The other tag team partner of Kurt Hawkins that formed the aforementioned Gatecrashers, Archer did nothing during his time on SmackDown aside from team with Hawkins. They teamed together starting in May and did virtually nothing. They were told to make an impact or get fired. And so they attacked MVP and Christian in 2010, who the hell cared. And seriously, that's the only notable thing they did together. They split up in October and then Archer went on to lose one singles match to Luke Gallows on Superstars and then got released. Honestly, if you remember this guy, huge props. And those are the 10 WWE superstars from the 2010s you've forgotten. What are your thoughts? Tell us in the comments below. And if you got kicked out of the Nexus for a groin injury, like the video and subscribe for more wrestling content you've forgotten since 2010. Thank you all for watching.